<laughs> on today's episode of Titus and Tate, Tate Stradama strikes again. Yes. Rashid Wallace, yep. cut the check yep. to the Memphis Tigers. Yep. Next up, Amani Bates. That's the, that's the last one we have left. Uh, Rashid Wallace <laughs> is officially on the Memphis Tigers basketball Ooh. staff. Um, and as you said, Tate, Amani Bates. He's next. Is on an official visit right now, I think, mm. in, in Memphis. Mm. The bag is coming from inside yes. the house. He yes. is there right now <laughs> as Rashid gets put on staff. So uh, that's interesting. Is, is Penny Hardaway winning the offseason for you? I guess mm. is the question. I, I think that's that. the big question of the day. We got to figure out who actually yeah. won the offseason because as Duke has taught us over the years, that's the actual national championship. You know what I mean? There's a window from April, once the national championship mm-hmm. game is over, all the way up to the Champions Classic. And that is the real season in college basketball. And right now, Memphis, Penny Hardaway, I think they may have won. It's it. been a long offseason, and um, there are uh, – it's, it's a long offseason to where, Tate uh, – we, we, we did this before, I think, like in April and May. We talked about who was winning the, the yeah. offseason out of the gate. But – a lot has changed. So much has changed. Now. Everything has changed. So maybe we'll assess it now. We'll see where where yeah. where if Amani Bates is going to Memphis, isn't he? I think like so. It feels like it. I mean, I, I have been told <laughs> that he was going to Memphis at least a week ago. At this point, and my sources so Tate's far this off season, they have been correct. I think he has to go. I think um, he has to go. All right, so we'll talk. We'll talk about who's winning the off season. Uh, maybe get into some other stuff. I don't know. It's a it's a casual Friday on a uh, on a, in mid August, so we'll see where this thing goes. But first, <laughs> Little League World Series first, yeah. yeah. yeah but first, <laughs> Woody Durham. Tate, you are the uh, Memphis basketball whisperer. Mm. You are, um, you, uh, you, you called this. You said this was happening. <laughs> how do you? First of all, how do you feel about this? That Larry Brown yeah. is now an assistant coach of Memphis. Ooh, I Rasheed feel really Wallace good about that. Is a is an assistant coach of Memphis. I feel great about that. The Carolina. Why aren't they on Carolina's bench? Is the question. I guess well, two Carolina it, guys are now in Memphis on Penny Hardaway's staff. I mean, to put it frankly, Larry Brown and Rasheed Wallace are too real. For North Carolina staff you know what I mean like you can't have a guy on your staff that you're not sure if he's going to his car to smoke a blunt or if he's going to <laughs> follow up on a recruit <laughs> yeah that's Larry Brown of course who I'm talking about um so yes in a, in a world if I were running the North Carolina program there's no there's no world in which Larry Brown King Rice and Rasheed Wallace are not on staff with Hubert Davis because yeah. we need a little bit of edge you know what I mean I love Hubert's nice guy act I love nice guys I love good guys but we need a little bit of bad guy in there too and yeah. North Carolina Right now, Brad Frederick is the bad guy, uh, if they had to have one. And Brad Frederick, I I love him to death, but he's not necessarily a bad guy DNA. Larry Braille may have been the first bad guy. You know what I mean? Like, when when you go back and you trace the roots of basketball, this is a coach that met Dr. James Naismith. This is a coach (laughs) that literally has gone to every blue blood and figured out a way to make them successful. He paid paid James Naismith to leave Canada and come to America. That was was the first recruitment. And then then make us adopt basketball as though it's our own. He's like, it's an American sport. It it was actually made in America. (laughs) Uh, Just because the guy who made it, it's very similar to flight. You know, we argue over this. The Wright brothers, there from Ohio, but they actually yeah. made flight in North Carolina. So you can argue it, but regardless, Larry Brown is um, a, a pillar in the basketball community. And you and I, over the years with Penny Hardaway, what's our you know what's our biggest frustration? Are we sure he's coaching basketball? Yeah. And I think when you put Larry Brown in there, I know Larry Brown's coaching basketball. And Rasheed Wallace has been a high school coach at Jordan High School in Durham. He just took a, a job as a head coach at NC Good, Better, Best Academy, whatever the name of that. It's basically the Our Lady of the Lake of high school basketball. He he tells them goodbye. I'm going to go join Penny Staff. Our Lady of the Lake. Basically. But right now you have two basketball guys yeah. that are in the room with Penny Hardaway and you got the bag in the background. And that is a recipe for success this, in college this basketball. This is such a Lakers approach. <laughs> yes, <to this>. exactly. <laughs> Penny just Hardaway's calling the Browns. like, how do you do it? And the Browns yeah. like, I just, you know, I look up Q scores. And yeah. then I, uh, I, I go, I, I, I say it, Thomas, guys. people <laughs> like him on the internet. Sign him. Sign him. <laughs> let him. Let him work out with me and Russell Westbrook. Dude, oh my God. Whoa! What's happening? I I so I just googled who just joined Memphis' uh, staff. No, for Bonzi real. Bonzi Wells. Bo- First of all, did you see Bonzi Wells is coaching? Well, see Bonzi. That, that's the little little uh, behind the radar conversation here. So Bonzi Wells and Rasheed Wallace they do a podcast together, and they needed to be close proximity. So Bonzi gets a job <laughs> down in Memphis so that he can he and Rasheed can keep doing the podcast and funnel kids to Memphis. Yeah, right? come so, on, I'm here. Like, dude, dude. I, this is I, I I legitimately had no idea this. I I pulled up. Uh, <laughs> 
I pulled up Memphis's roster because yeah. I wanted to see if Rashid. I, I just wanted to see Rashid's headshot, to be honest. Yeah, me too. On the, on the website, it's is it not, already up? It's not up yet. Um, but the strength and conditioning coach at, on the Memphis basketball. I'm looking at the website right now. Rob yep. Hornet is the guy's name. And the reason that stands out to me, Tate, is because I went to high school with this guy. What? I played football Wait, with this guy. I know this guy. Call him right now. <laughs> we, we got tons of questions. I used to go to his house before football <laughs> games, and his his mom would like like he he was a big well, uh, he was a big Friday Night Lights guy. So he yeah. would like like uh, he he was into the high school football scene. Where of like. Course. Um, on and game days after after school in between the game in your going, house for the people that didn't watch our video go watch it on Titans and Tate YouTube when we went to Indiana and we did the tour your house basically you could sit right there and watch high school football right, right. Uh, I mean so it was basically Friday Night Lights Rob lived right across the street got you and got you. Uh, on Fridays we would go on game days when we were playing at home we'd have like four hours to kill between yeah. school getting out and game we'd go over <laughs> to his house and we'd watch like some some shitty football movie well that's usually when the br and, blunt rolling is yeah. happening in one facet <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but dude i had no like i knew he was a strength coach he, he was a uh he was an assistant at virginia not too yeah. long ago before virginia won the national title and I, uh, I think he was doing like women's basketball down there and when i was i was down in charlottesville the first time i linked up with him i had no idea what he's been up to yeah and i just <laughs> now he's you know he's at the, the staff, biggest dude. you know college basketball program this in America. is a gold mine for us yeah can we I'm call him? Text him right yeah, now. I was gonna say, like, like it, it, if you had to put him in a category, and I don't like to I'm categorize honest, people, just, is he a good guy or a bad guy? Dude, he's bag. Okay, great. He's big time bag. Okay, and I'm, great. I'm, I'm just gonna send him when we get off the show. I'm gonna actually screw it, dude. I'm just gonna yeah, do it send right him now. the text now. I'm gonna uh, do it right now. Let him know that we're talking about him. I mean. In general, Memphis, we've been waiting for the Penny Hardaway era to really hit, right? That's that's all we've wanted is for Penny Hardaway to go to Memphis after his mutiny, after his coup, and just take over college basketball. And with Coach K walking out, with Roy Williams walking out, I mean the blue and for Memphis to be a blue team, yeah. they could easily, you know, bump up to a blue blood status. And I think that's what Penny's trying to do. And good job. Good job, Penny. I, I, I just texted it. him uh Amani with eye emojis. Yes, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of eye emojis, Stanford, hit us back. What, the hell is what is going, going on? on? We well, need to know what happened to Tyrell Terry. Oh man, this is uh, Memphis is is putting together quite a uh, yeah quite quite an off season here, and it happened very quickly. Mm -hmm. dude. Like honestly, it was like it, was did Larry Brent? I don't know. I gotta be Let's careful. Let's be honest. Be, is, Let, yeah, is, is Imani like how did the, 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 this was Larry Brown? Larry Brown just started pulling the strings as soon as he got the canvas, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, like it's a, it's a I, don't like to, I don't like to point fingers, <laughs> but I will tell you this. I I was with Coach Brown last fall, yeah, and this is November of last year. We did the Asheville Invitational. I went and met, met with Coach Brown because he's like, oh, maybe I want to do a podcast. So I like, wouldn't talk with him. And we're talking about Cade Cunningham, and he's like, he knows everything about Cade. I'm like, how do you know so much about Cade? He's like, I'm and basically, at this point, I'm basically I, like his godfather. I'm a, <laughs> and, and I'm and I'm thinking to myself, oh, so for, coach, con for context, Larry yeah. Brown at this point was like a he's a high school coach in Brooklyn still. Yeah, he was. Okay. He was All just right. he wasn't even doing anything at this point. He was looking for <laughs> jobs. He was trying to get hired. All right. But he said that Kate Cunningham is that close to him, and Kate Cunningham, of course, go is at Oklahoma State at this time. He's telling me how he advised him to stay at Oklahoma State, regardless. You realize that Larry Brown is still very, like I said, a basketball pillar. He's very much yeah. involved at the grassroots level. I don't know if it's Nike. I don't know who it is, but he's involved. <laughs> he knows these kids. So like you said, it, it, he comes to Memphis and we get Duran Duran uh, yeah. to commit immediately. And now Monty Bates is almost a foregone conclusion. He's going to go to Memphis. And you just got to follow the guy who's always done it <laughs> it's the best. It's unbelievable, dude. I love him. It's I love because I, 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 I got to be honest, I wasn't really thinking much about Penny and Memphis this yeah. offseason up until like, what, three weeks ago? Yeah. Then all of a sudden, it's the, the floodgates have opened. This is a now, man that got Emmanuel Moutier to commit to SMU, right? I mean, this I mean, is a guy who got a bunch, Sterling Brown. Like, there's a bunch of guys that he got to go to SMU that ended up being in the NBA. This is what he does. This is what Larry does. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, so I guess let, let, let's let's try to contextualize this. Okay. Where does Memphis – should we just work off the assumption that Imani Bates is committed to Memphis? I think so. I think he's still got an official visit to Oregon. Um, Michigan State's definitely not happening. And, no. And it's basically G League or Memphis, right? And it's yes. going to come down to who pays him more. And Oregon, I guess, like – Oregon's a dark horse. Oregon is a dark horse. I, I don't want to dismiss Oregon. Because so Bull sorry, Bull Oregon to me, I thought Bull Bull yeah. was a lock to go to Kentucky at one point. Yeah. Then I thought it was Arizona or UCLA, and then he ends up at Oregon. So Oregon, Oregon watch out for Yeah, Oregon. And, and Altman's Altman's a great coach, so it's like it's not even just like a bag play. No, like, no, no, It would actually be like a good – 
move for him, but I just, it doesn't, it doesn't check the, uh, the, the, what's the, what's the test where you just close your eyes and picture it. Mm -hmm. And I see a Monty Bates running out in the I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see, I, I, I ran the Photoshop. It's mental Photoshop. I'm doing in my head. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it would only happen. I think if Nike looks around and says, okay, Zion isn't doing what we thought Zion was going to do, you know, shoe sales wise. Yeah. He's not the, uh, the person that we're really going to lock in on for the next 10 years. Maybe Imani Bates is the guy, so they do a little pivot, and they're like, "We got to make sure we allocate the bag." Can guys have have we sussed that out yet? Can guys uh, sign shoe deals if if the if the um, assuming it's it's the same company that's with the team? You know mm. what I mean? Because like obviously, if you're going to Oregon, you can't sign an Adidas deal. You like, would think they would. I mean, I don't know. I guess someone might try, but uh, but it, <laughs> could, could could Imani Bates if he's going to Oregon or Memphis? Memphis is Nike, right? Uh, yeah. Could he could he sign a Nike deal? He is could, that allowed? theoretically. Is that allowed? It's it's the, In theory, it's allowed, but I don't think that's going to happen because, like we all know, the, the deals are already being done prior. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it would be weird for Adidas to say, hey, you know, let's let's just use an example. Dennis Smith Jr., bam, out of bio. We've already given you $40,000 mm -hmm. without a contract, and now we're not going to, you know, mm -hmm. we're not even sure we're going to see <laughs> the receipts of that, you know, situation, so... Uh, oh man! All right, so if Memphis isn't winning the offseason, um, which I I still think it might be a little too early. I think they got to get a money. If they if if Monty yeah. Bates commits to Memphis, which boy, it does feel like he's going to. Uh, I I think Memphis has to be the big offseason winner. But if not, where where do we stand right now? It's been a long time since we did this. Yeah, I think the last time we did this, do we have Andy Katz on? I believe to, so. to help us out. I believe so. And I think number one on my losers board was Illinois. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot has changed since then. Illinois is back. Yeah, Illinois is definitely back, as as reported by Katie Underwood on the show last <laughs> week. Um, God, that was last week. That feels like ages ago. <laughs> time flies. <laughs> We didn't ask her enough questions. I want to bring her back. I, I, Katie has to come back. The one question I forgot to ask her, uh, she's apparently the reason Brad Underwood lost a bunch of weight because she went home one day and told her dad, like, you look pretty fat yeah. on camera. <laughs> and then he lost a bunch of weight. She was like, I yeah. She, and then she basically was like, yeah, I had to be real with him. Yeah. <laughs> we, we asked her all fair. She was like, yeah, I just had to tell him straight up. I was like, man, you're cold-blooded. I kind of like it. It's, it's funny until she does it to us. She's yeah, like, I know. She's, she's like talking to me. She's like, you're going to be on air. You need to get in shape. I'm like, look, lady, it's a global pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> uh all right so let's 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 take some stock here let's take some uh the, the pulse of the nation if you will should we do it in tiers do, do we have do we have top yeah you tiers? can do that My, mine is very hastily thrown together okay. anyway so like i didn't um it's a casual friday it's a, yeah mine's very casual mm. but uh i can tear it on the go yeah I'm, I'm good enough at this job i think i can tear on the go okay. so we will uh i can i can give you tears you go ahead you start though i think will wade is in tier one uh, okay i think efton reed uh five star dude connect. i forgot about that guy yeah exactly but what see, a that, circus that was well and and that's kind <laughs> of you know the the weird part of the offseason right is you have to time it right to actually win it you know yeah. so you want to be one of the last like when kansas got andrew wiggins it was this long drawn out part right. process everyone's right. trying to figure out where he's going to go then he comes in the summer and everyone's like oh my god kansas joel Embiid, andrew wiggins boom guess what guys you won the offseason uh i think lsu was right on the verge of doing that um you know they get adam miller who comes from uh illinois and everyone's very excited about mm -hmm. that. Then when Epson Reed comes, it's like, oh, wow, LSU, they're, they're a team to watch out for in the SEC. Is John Calipari in Kentucky? Is it over? Is it right. dead? But they've kind of waned as the summer has gone and on. And then, but but they're back, not with like landing recruits, but yeah. the, the NCAA investigation mm. that was supposed to be wrapped up by the end of July, they they just punted on it. They're yeah. like, we'll, they we'll said, figure it out yeah. a little later, which it's is like, a well, huge you let W. Mega conferences happen yeah. first, and then we'll figure it out. Huge W for Will Wade. Yeah, and I I think I think what's gonna happen. Cam Thomas leads summer league in scoring. MVP, right? Yeah, MVP. Co MVP with uh with Mitchell, right? Yeah, Davion, I think Davion so. and him. Davion. Well, um, Davion, the key, the Baylor's in there. Baylor's in the conversation. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the national champions having a pretty good <laughs> yeah, having a pretty good offseason. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> i remember we, we, we did a show where we were we did a show at the start of the offseason that was basically us being upset that will wade had ruined bag dropping you know right, what i mean that's, right. that's how young the offseason was this is before nil this is right, before any of the right. stuff happens and we were just upset that will wade had ruined the game and then nil comes in and changes the game so I, was I think just he's laughing. still up there. I was just laughing, thinking about the uh, the bit I do. I, I've worked myself into a shoot with this bit that I, I truly believe it now that uh, mm. whatever coach wins the national championship should be coach of the year. Yeah. 
<laughs> Scott Drew's coach of the year. Scott Drew's coach of the year. Facts. I think I'm going to do that. I think that's my, I think if I ever get a vote on this, I'm going to just vote for, or I guess the number one overall seed. So the, if the, you have to vote before well, the tournament, the I'm just going to vote is, for The question is, who is the coach of the year in 2020? <sighs> that's, that's the question. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it was, it was it was technically Anthony Grant, so I think that that is Dave, proof positive Dave's that Dave's national, the national champion. champion. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think too. You had player of the year and coach of the year. Yeah. What else is there? I'm sorry, Kansas fans, because yeah. I think they would argue. And you and I, we we were in the Bill Self camp at one point. We were like, basically, how do you stop Bill Self? This man's the best. Head to head, Kansas wins, but at the end of the year, we give it to Anthony Grant. Dude, that is. Uh... <laughs> I I I just pressed. I just finally gotten over 2020 not having a tournament and yeah. dealing with it. And then you say that, and just all the all the wounds came back up. Not not yeah. of not having the tournament, but of like trying to contextualize who was the best that year. Yeah, how should we look back on it? Yeah, she was Cassius Winston was a senior that mm. year. He was he was ready. Tate, I yeah. saw it with my own eyes. I watched his senior night. I was at that game. He was ready for the Big Ten run, and the the the, the Michigan State was going to be. A problem in that time. <laughs> Dayton was awesome. <laughs> Damn it! Uh, Just throw it away. Will Wade's a, Will Wade's a good one though. Efton, Efton Reed was a uh, was hilarious. I completely forgot about that. And yeah. Ohio State was in the running for him, and I just remember like. I I didn't I didn't follow enough to like know how good the kid is no, to where I was like no. I really hope he goes to Ohio State. I've never but like, seen him play. I've never seen him play either. Yeah. Um. But I was I was texting people. <laughs> I do like that you and I are the are the people that we will react to the recruitment and then go can't wait to watch him play. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know how it works. It's not about how good the guy is. It's about like all the all shenanigans going yeah, around. All the tweets and edits that he that's, went through. That's really all it is. Um. <laughs> And I just remember talking to the, the Ohio State people, not even just the coaches, but the the some media types and from Columbus and just a handful of people I know that knew yeah. more than I knew. Yeah. And I was Boots like, well, what's the deal with this guy? And they're like, I I've we've been doing this a long time. We've never seen a recruitment like this. And uh there's a zero percent chance he's coming to Ohio State. <laughs> and he just kept kicking like the whole the whole deal was hilarious. And I I and in those it put situations, me on my, like, it put on my radar. And you're kind of it. excited as, as the school, like you said, before you get into the drudge of like what the actual inside and intel is, you're excited because you're just in the top ten. So you think there's yeah. a chance? Yes. Like I would love to see the tip to edit that's like actually the chances of the odds. You know what I yeah. mean? Like even though uh Amani gives us four. Just do like 95% Memphis, 5% Dude, G League. I want to be in the room when these Tipton edits are being made where the players and the PR team and yeah. everyone are just going over like, yeah, as you said, we have the actual. The actual on the top 10, there are three actuals. And then mm. what are the other seven? How do you go about picking those? What is the politics behind yeah. it? Does somebody stop and look at them and be like, we got guys – we can't have all ten schools be Adidas schools. We gotta we gotta sprinkle in some some Under Armour and Nike here. Mm. We gotta so how about we get 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 rid of uh, NC State, take them off the list. Let's throw let's throw Maryland on there just for for shit. I, I, I how think, it goes? I, I think if Harrison Barnes like because he was such a media savvy kid when he came out, he wanted to be the next Kobe Bryant, the next MJ. I think if we have one of those kids happen again, they're going to be able to brand it where they have it regionally based, right? So they can do like I have a West Coast team. I yeah, have a Midwest yeah. team. Yeah. I have Texas. Like they, they just go for fan bases that they know are going to be like, I'm excited that this guy has us in the top 10. And then that's how they become the biggest brand in basketball. I'm excited for uh, the the SEC, the the, the mega civil, SEC. civil War Part 2, yeah. where the SEC yeah. forms its own conference. S-E-C-E-D-E. And then, <laughs> E-D-E. And then the rest uh, form the the northern the union we'll yes. the good the good better best <laughs> and we get a guy that uh puts out his tipton edit and it's just like has the sec logo yeah it's, it's got like four schools from it's got carolina ohio state michigan and the sec, SEC. Logo. <laughs> we'll, we'll play for the sec just go in there gonna figure it out uh i gotta i gotta put in my uh in, in my top tier let me see let me use all my list let me tier these for you i'm gonna throw the overtime league i think in the top mm. tier because in my in my estimation i think we're at a position now in mid-august of 2021 that the overtime league and stop me if you disagree mm. has positioned itself as the premier league for a high school guy to make an announcement that he's skipping college to go play there and to get everyone just foaming at the mouth at how yeah. this changes everything. Mm-hmm. I don't think the G League has the cachet anymore, Tate. The yeah, G League is the G League was literally one and done. Yeah, <laughs> literally, yeah, the G League is one and done. It's one and done. Uh, I think the Overtime League has has become the splashy headline, <laughs> yeah. and it's hilarious because nobody knows what the Overtime League is. Mm. Is it a team? Is it a league? Is yeah. it a facility? 
It's all of those things. It's none of those things. Yeah. How are they making money? Who who who, who is bankrolling the? What is this? League? It is yeah. movie pass of basketball. Yeah, where they just are saying, let's just acquire all everybody. Yes, let's get all the assets. users, get all the assets, <laughs> and then we'll figure out how to monetize this. Uh-huh. And that's what they're doing, and uh, it's working in the sense that they're winning the PR battle. That like every time a kid commits, it's this changes everything. It, it does feel like you know you see like Mac McClung wearing the O, like the overtime chain, like the overtime brand itself, the social media pages. It, it kind of has cachet with the kids. Dude, you know I got I mean? it. I got it. The overtime league. Whoever's running the overtime league obviously listens to the show, and they took yes. my idea mm. um, that I first got when I was watching Michael Porter come up through the ranks. Michael Porter would have been an overtime kid. Yes. Yes. So the idea not I have, Dante, but Michael Porter would be the idea that I've I've thrown out on the show many times of a guy who just sits out as long as possible. Like yes. when he's a his senior in high school, he opts out of mm. the second half of his season because he doesn't want to risk his good. scholarship. Yeah. Then he gets to campus and he's like, I don't want to mess up my draft stock. I'm gonna go ahead and opt out. Mm-hmm. There's too much going on. Yep. Jalen Johnson has already done it. Yes. I'm gonna follow in his footsteps. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna go ahead and opt out. And in fact, I'm not gonna let the season start. I'm just gonna opt out. Like I'm I don't wanna get injured. And he gets to the NBA and he kind of does the same thing where he like barely plays and ah, he kind of runs out there and twists his hand. You understand. And he, he, he's like, ah, I, don't, I don't feel 100%. Yeah. I think we're yeah. going to, you know, and there's he's like a, always a mystery injury because yeah. he's trying to get through his rookie deal so then he can sign a max mm-hmm. and then that's when he'll start his grip. I think that's what the overtime league is doing, except they're doing it as an entire league, that there is no overtime league. I, I think you got to stay be woke no on this. Basketball play, that's what you're saying. Yes. There, there you have to just... stay woke on this, Tate. It's not, an, <laughs> it's not a league, it's a brand. It's, yes. it's, there, there is no league. The league doesn't exist. Mm. Look around. Where is mm. it? If the league existed, it would exist. It doesn't exist. And that's that's my statement on the matter. I think that's it. Is that they're trying to get guys to just wear overtime logos on shirts and and the secret and, all that kind of and the stuff. reason why this works is because when you go to the G League, and, and I know kids don't like to hear this, you have to play. Yeah. And, and when you actually play the games, you know this happens. You lose your value. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you you lose your draft stock because Isaiah Todd, for example. If Isaiah Todd went to Virginia or Maryland or North Carolina or Kentucky or any of these schools that he had in his top 10, I promise you Isaiah Todd is a top 10 pick. I promise you. But he went to the G League mm-hmm. and got exposed by a, <laughs> a bunch of other wings, and he ends up going to the second round. Deshaun Nix could have gone to the Final Four yep. with UCLA. Yep. Who knows? Maybe he's the difference in the game. Gets him over the hump. They go to the championship game. They win it all. Guess what? Deshaun Nix is going to be a top 20 pick. Yeah. Now he's on the Sixers trying to fight for a roster yeah. spot. So that's why the G League got in trouble because all these kids got there and they're like, wait a second, I have to play basketball? I thought this is for my brand. And the overtime league, like you're saying, they're like, yes, that, that is we, the brand. We get in it. fact, you don't even have to play basketball. Yes, come here. So uh, what I'm saying is this year, if the overtime league actually happens and you, yeah. you see box scores put out there, don't take it at face value. No, folks. Don't, don't look at them. Don't no, d- d- you look at whatever, but like, don't just assume a game happened. Mm-hmm. I think this is a PR machine at work. I think they're sitting down, they're typing up an algorithm, they're trying to figure out how many points should we give each prospect yeah. and whatever. They throw out the box score, and nobody bothers to be like, mm-hmm. did this game actually happen? Is yeah. this actually a thing? It, it's kind of like the difference between college wrestling, which is like an actual sport, yeah, and the WWF. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like the overtime it's league is the WWF. How old are you? Yeah, well, whatever it's called now. <laughs> the, when I was a kid, it was the WWF. You know what I mean? So that that is the difference between the two. Like we got wrestling, as South yeah. Park would say. We got wrestling over here. You yeah. know, we got basketball, yeah. and we got like a brand game over you here. You know what someone told me about the G League that blew my mind? And they were they were, I forget who it was, but uh, uh, Jim, when did the WWF die? Do you know? What that was like that? in the early two thousands, right? Oh my god! Yeah. Wow. All right. That's when I was watching. What was the precursor to WWF? WWW. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. There's like a thousand. <laughs> we need more oh, Ws. Man. Uh, someone told me the G League. The thing about the G League. This blew my mind, and okay. it's and it's true. Please. It is the only basketball league. Uh, which I guess maybe we have to, to edit, edit this. this because maybe the overtime league, this is the case too. It is the only basketball league where all the players and all the coaches don't want to be there. Yeah. Because they're all trying to like move on to something better. Yeah. Every single person involved in that organization is like, I don't want to be here. I want to be in the NBA. Yeah. <laughs> and, and when I heard, when I really like thought about that, I was like, that's the league that's supposed to take down college basketball i mean it's a league where nobody wants to be there and also like what do you do in your free time right at least in college basketball it's like uh you know these coaches have to go to some functions they're kind of a part of this whole community you know whatever it may be the players you have class 
there's like an understood social construct to what's happening here. The overtime league, I don't know what happens, <laughs> but it might be Larry Browning, which is blunt rolling. I mean, I don't know, I don't know what you do in the free time, but so it can't be good. Give me your give me your power rankings of uh, college alternatives um, mm. in, in terms of uh, uh, is the overtime league number one? No, I, number one is NBL. Number one is Australia. It's Australia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lamelo Ball just taught us that number one is going Good point. to Australia. Good point. Number yeah. one's Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, he also taught us then. And if, the Aussies if, love basketball, so when you go to Australia, they fall in love with you, and now you have a brand. It's it's a whole thing. I guess if he if he taught us that, then we have to also throw we have, the number two has to be Lithuania. Yes. Has to be playing in Lithuania. Yes. That's on, the that's the first step to Australia. You on go Lithuania. Facebook streams with Jeff Goodman in attendance, <laughs> and Levar Ball won't even talk to him, yeah, and he flew halfway across the world just to get and an ESPN's interview. It's like you promised. <laughs> exclusive interview with LeVar Ball. <laughs> uh, yeah, w what else we throw it out there? So over, I, I think overtime, uh, uh, in terms of like, yeah, like I said, like the G League is obviously the better league if you want to like hone your skills. But mm. if you want to get people to retweet the announcement, yeah, I feel like the overtime league has overtaken the G League. What about a grassroots league? Can, can we figure out something else? Is there like a, uh, what, like what is the Drew League exactly? It's a pro-am deal? Can, is that yeah. it? What if a guy says, I want to go to the Drew League? I mean, it's epic. I mean, <laughs> it would be great. I'm just going like to play LA fan. I'm not going to go to college. I'm just going to play at Rucker Park for like six months leading yeah. up to the draft. And that's all I'm going to do. I mean, I played in the Drew League. And when I showed up for that game, I mean, the guys who were coaching us, they just looked defeated. You know what I mean? I played with the Ringer. We showed up. It's like the most milk toast white men they've ever seen. They're like, uh, this is your team. Yeah, it is. Uh, unfortunately, yes, that's our team. Uh, I, I think oh I God. think a grassroots league would be nice, but I think, as we all know, once you bring grassroots in the situation, it sounds really good, yeah. but corruption's on the way, you yeah. know, because all it takes is the one person that's running the league. Grassroots is code for corruption. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Any organization, and I love grassroots we gotta organizations. Bring, we got to bring grassroots <laughs> into the – is grassroots a business term? Like, mm. like when people are – building apps would you say like this is like a grassroots yeah. operation of that's uh, what they say yeah all right because if they don't they should that's a great way to like that's a great i'm way sure to... that's i think that's what the ringer told me at one point that we're just a grassroots startup. operation it's oh a startup, startup. yeah <laughs> 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 i feel like grassroots needs to to cross over get more cash get, get, get more cash and everyone just is like yeah this is like the this app is like uber but it's like a grassroots version and, yeah yeah i don't know uber. um all right, what else? Who else is a big winner? Well, uh, speaking of grassroots movement, movements that have been pure and from the heart and uh, definitely have no marketing behind it, Coach K's farewell tour, I think, has to be up there yeah. uh, as an offseason winner. It's a tier one offseason move. It's a move that was predicted on this show. Here's a question, though. Yeah. Did he announce it too soon? Should he have waited till like, right now? This feels like a good time to announce it when mm -hmm. there's not a lot going on in the world of sports. Coach K drops the hammer now and is like, I'm I'm retiring this year. Well, he did it in June before the NBA playoffs. So he was That's trying to point. time it and he yeah. thought that it would carry over, but he didn't realize, or maybe he did, that the NIL was going to happen July 1st, which brings me to my another mm. tier one offseason storyline, the NIL rights. Uh, July 1st, it hits. Andy Katz came on our show, told us it was going to happen. And then in the same vein, Mark Few becomes the face of college basketball during those trials and hearings. So he's also winning the offseason. Mark Few is a tier one because Mark yeah. Few, uh, listen, Baylor was unbelievable. I, I certainly think every Baylor fan on earth would argue that Baylor was a better team than Gonzaga the entire season. Yes. I don't necessarily believe that, but they certainly proved it on the one night they had to. And uh, I, you know, I, I Baylor is a better team than Gonzaga. I'll, I'll, I'll agree with that. But the point is, Tate, um, for a lot of people, myself included, for that entire season, Gonzaga was the best team in the country mm -hmm. last season. They go undefeated, obviously, go yeah. into the national title game. They don't lose to Baylor. The game is over before the under-16 timeout in the first half. It, it was over. over two minutes into the game. It was over. We looked at each other, you and I. We, we try to wait for these moments to, <laughs> before you make declarations. We looked at each other and said, I think this game is, this over. is over. And it was just snowballed from the there. Bell, yeah. the, the bell rang. Baylor landed two punches. Yep. It was over. Yep. Um, and that should be, if we are in normal times, if we, the pandemic's not going on and it's like weird vibes around the tournament already and all that, in normal times, we're ripping Mark Few apart. Mm -hmm. We're saying like, what the hell happened? You have Jalen Suggs, you have Corey Kispert, you have Drew Titt. Your team is absolutely loaded. You're undefeated. You choke so badly. How did this happen? Mark Few immediately pivots, flushes yep. that down, yep. uh, starts talking about his name's in the North Carolina job hunt. Yep. Right? That was, but that was before, right? Did Carolina yeah. hire Hubert well, Davis before the? Well, this is after the season is over. So. Yeah, after the season's yeah. over. When did Hubert Davis get hired? He got hired like 
April like eighth, like a week because it was a week Roy, after, right? Roy announced I got that on right. April first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got that right. Yeah. yeah. So like the as soon as the season's over, yeah. Mark Few's name's in the the Carolina. Exactly. He, he, so he's already Walker Kessler. That. Walker Kessler, yes. Yep. Um, they land Chet Holmgren this off season. And as you said, he's like in front of Congress. Now he's like made himself the face of name image likeness when like last year he was asked about it and he was like, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's like, don't bring it to the game. <laughs> this is going to ruin college sports. <laughs> so absolutely genius off season by Mark Few, how he's handled. And now Gonzaga is going to be number one in the country coming into next year. And everyone's going to, yeah. he really does just power through. He's like, he is Mark Few. The way he runs his program is the equivalent of, like Twitter back in like 2015 when like someone would go through a scandal and they just tweet through it. Yeah. Rick Pitino was really good at that. Rick yeah, Pitino no, he, tweeted he, he through did it. tweet through it. He, just he, he actually got it. to the other side of it. Yeah. He like got scandal, back to college basketball. Scandal happens in you and I, you, to you or I. We're yeah. like, delete everything. Yes. Get off the grid. Wipe it. Yeah. Rick Pitino, I think, started his Twitter account because he was going through a scandal. <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to tweet through this. He's like, I'm going to face these guys. I'm going to tweet through it. Uh, that is Mark Few when he faces crisis in his program. He's just like, everyone thinks we're chokers because uh, we, they never made the final four until mm -hmm. they did. But uh, then they lose in the title game to Carolina. Like the, all the ebbs and flows, we don't need to revisit all of them. But uh, that Gonzaga no, go has back gone to through. the Carolina thing. Again. <laughs> all the ebbs, all the the roller coaster of Gonzaga basketball. Through it all, Mark Few is like, I'm just going to tweet through it. Well, I'm, I'm just going to power through, pretend it doesn't happen. I, I want to give it like a comparison, and this might be a stretch, but the college coaches are the NBA stars, like the players, right? So in college, the coaches are the stars, and the NBA, the players are the stars. And if you wanted to, you know, give a, a doppelganger to these coaches, I would say Mark Few is Kevin Durant, right? He didn't, he didn't win the championship, but somehow – everyone collectively has said, well, he, he is the guy, yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah. he, he kind of is the guy yeah. now. And then coach K is LeBron, right? He's sitting over here. <laughs> he has the farewell tour. He should be getting all the flowers, but they're saying he's a washed King, you know, and yeah. coach K is like, I'm not washed right. one last ride. Let's get after it. And then I think Scott drew and Baylor, they are Giannis and the Bucks. Like they mm. actually won the title. Okay, let's they see. should be getting all, you know, the praise and they should be getting all the coverage. But nobody, everyone wants to give some sort of caveat as to why they, like you said, it was one night. They weren't the best team all year. You know, whatever it may be. So those are kind of where it's splintered in college basketball. Mick Cronin is. Oh, that's a good question. Uh he's like the phoenix suns <laughs> there you go that's good. right yeah yeah mick crone's like the phoenix like suns. they had a great run and, and everyone johnny juzang to... is chris paul like he's coming <laughs> back for one more <laughs> we're not sure it's going to be the same we're not sure if the magic's going to hit again but we might as well run let's it back. keep going what else is there uh... <laughs> i think that's all i got Kansas is <laughs> Bill Self is Joel Embiid. uh-huh and the six it, it checks out because yeah. uh, joel's a, yeah, all the I talent think. in the world they always come up a little short, but like, are they? Yeah, yeah. Like that's that's an insult to Kansas. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Kansas they're upset. Fans. They're not. They're but also, Wilt Chamberlain, Kansas, yeah, played with the Sixers. In, yeah. All right. <laughs> or the okay. Warriors. I think he played with the Warriors. Like the Philadelphia Warriors. How do we get on this? I don't remember. Oh, Mark Few. Uh, Mark yeah. Few. Yeah, the, the, he's a star. I just want to let you know that I think Mark Few is Kevin Durant, where he is now the yes. guy, and and Coach K and LeBron are on the other side. Right. But they're still trying to get your attention. You know right. what I mean? Like they're not letting this guy have it center, have all the center of attention. So. That's there where we go. Uh, what what else is there? I want to I want to throw in. Uh, I think in tier one, Chris Beard has to be in there okay. too. Um, and because Chris Beard finessed the hell out of Texas Tech, uh, we, we all knew he was going to Texas, but for some mm. reason, Texas Tech fans really felt like he was going to stick around. They thought it was impossible. Yeah, I remember I tweeted last year that like once Shock is done, like you know, congratulations, Chris Beard is coming, and I got railed. Yeah, like I was an idiot. Yeah, but I, <laughs> but I also get it. Like I, I would feel the same if you were at a school. And your kind of little brother and and big brother over here is like, just don't don't worry, we're gonna get your guy soon. It's like, all right, who's calm the down. best program? Who has the best program where um if if there are rumors that their coach is leaving, they're not like, no, that would never happen. They our, our guy's gonna definitely stay here. It might be Xavier. <laughs> I'm trying to, I just, I'm trying to think off the top of, cause you know, like every single program, that's how it works. Like you could yeah. be, you could be the coach, like Mark Godfrey at Cal State Northridge. And you and I could start. It's kind of like a battle between Xavier and Cincinnati. Yeah. You but we could I mean? start, we could start a rumor that like Cal is interested in hiring Mark Godfrey yeah. and, and the Cal State Northridge fans would be like, he, he would never do that. Mm -hmm. He, why would he do that? That mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense. He's happy here. Yeah. We give him all the freedom. He loves being in LA. He loves being in LA. <laughs> like, and everyone is like, all the fans just build a case that like, he will definitely not, you know? Yeah. Um, 
But there's got to be programs where they'd be like, yeah, I, I could see that. <laughs> I can see them definitely leaving. I feel like Xavier's a good one just because they've had so many coaches leave. They've and Chris Mack, I mean, when you have Mata, an, Sean Miller, Chris yeah. Mack, that if 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 Travis Skip Prosser, yeah, Skip Pro, if Travis Steele's name gets floated for I don't know, pick a school, um, DePaul. <laughs> okay, that one, that one. I'd be fired up if I was Xavier. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you almost let him go to DePaul at that point. Uh, Chris Beard finesses Texas Tech because, as, as we said, like all the Texas Tech fans are like, this can't happen. They're in the same conference, whatever, whatever. That brings me to the next point, Tate. Did Chris Beard know that Texas was going to the SEC? I think so. It feels like... From what I've heard from a couple of my Texas friends, this was a, 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 a plan. This was a strategic yeah. plan that has been known for at least a year. Here's my other question. So. Here's a galaxy brain thing for you that you probably didn't think about. Did Kim Mulkey at Baylor <laughs> know that the Big 12 was done? I mean, that's a, that's a great question. And then also, she, what did, did they she know? didn't even play at LSU, and she was like, I'm going I'm back going to home. She's play, she took all the Brad Stevens coming home memes yeah. and was like, I guess that's a bad example because Brad Stevens is not from Bloomington. Damn it. Erase it. Jim, delete this part. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, take that out. But she, yeah, she's like, I'm coming home, guys. I'm going to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And you're like, what the hell? Yeah. That, um, I mean, the best she was, get out because she knew the Big 12 was folding. I legitimately thought that she was she played at LSU. And then you were the first person to tell me that she <laughs> like, did it. And I'm still a little thrown off by the whole thing. Because it was not It was like they celebrated it that way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's one thing to be like, I'm going back to my home state. I was like, if I went to High Point, you know, Tubby Smith hires me to go to High Point, I wouldn't be like, I'm coming back to my <laughs> alma mater. <laughs> Roll out the red carpet. Uh, and and uh, the, the other thing I just want to say about uh, Chris Beard is he got Marcus Carr, um, and mm. we love him for that because he got Marcus Carr out of the Big Ten. So uh, yeah, but Texas is gonna be really good, dude. They got they got Timmy Allen too mm. from uh, Utah. Um, they, and you got a handful of other chances. I forget the other dudes are, but Timmy Allen and uh, Marcus Carr are the big ones. Texas is going to be like a top five team. Yeah, I need like a Texas to be undefeated at home and have a headline that just says home improvement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, can we talk about like tier five or, or less? Like I yeah, just wanted to throw yeah, this out there. Just, just Iowa as, as a program, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they had so much promise this past year. And then when you look at the talent that came out, uh, of this class, Luca Garza looked great in you know the G League. Joe Wieskamp, you and I really both believe in. So does Greg Popovich, who just won a gold medal. Um, C.J. Frederick goes to Kentucky. You know, I mean, it yeah. was just yeah. it was not a great off season for Iowa. So and if it, we're talking about tier way, one, I'm going to go down to tier five and just put them. The there. way that Iowa lost in the NCAA tournament hurts too because um, not all losses are equal. This one felt like a a football loss, and what I mean by that is. Yeah. When bowl games happen in in football, in college football, and one team destroys another team, that sticks with you for like 10 years. And yeah. everyone looks at it and says, you can't, like, I don't know, Ohio State for the longest time, like, because the, the LSU and Florida beat us in back-to-back -back national title games. It was like, Ohio State just simply cannot compete with the South. Yeah. They do not have the athletes. <laughs> and, like, I was sitting there as an Ohio State student at the time. I was like... <laughs> Maybe they're right, you know. Like yeah, yeah, I, yeah. you I, start I, believing it. See, yeah, that's how like, the SEC works. They get the doubt in your mind, yes. and you're like, "Wait a second. <laughs> yes. And and college football is like the one sport where this is true, where where uh, they the, the stereotypes are built, and then the stereotypes are like weirdly true. You know yeah. what I mean? Where like they, they they show a stat where they're like Michigan State has never, you know, Michigan State has never beat Texas. Yeah. Ever. Out, outside, like ever. Yeah. You, you know, and then you look at you look it up, and it's like the last time they played was like 1954. Yeah, exactly. And you're like, well, what does that have to do with this game? And then yeah. the game happens, and Texas wins by four touchdowns, and you're like, I guess, I, I yeah, guess yeah, there's yeah, something. Yeah, to, I guess there's something and to this. The point being here is that or the way Oregon beat Iowa, it felt mm. like a program loss. We talk about program wins on the mm -hmm. show sometimes because they're hilarious, and I still don't know what those are. <laughs> but uh, this was a program loss where it was like it was like an indictment on the entire state of Iowa and how they approached the sport of basketball. That Oregon just ran them off the floor, and yeah. Iowa could not compete at any. Like Iowa's guys are just looking at the bench every five seconds, like what do we do? Well, and, they're and, so much better. Than and, us. and it was a very like you said, it, it was one of those moments where it was athleticism that was really the difference maker. Like, yeah, you know, Oregon had all these guards that were just like supremely athletic and you looked at Iowa and you're like, they don't have anyone that can match up with these guys. And that was our, already a, uh, a talking point of sorts. When you talked about Fran McCaffrey's team, you knew that they had talent, but you also knew that they were lacking athleticism. And then when you see that and it's so glaring and it's against a team that is full of top flight athletes, I mean, it was a bad matchup. You know what I mean? We got Andy Katz up here, and Andy Katz told us that that's the reason it happened the way that it did. But it does feel like McCaffrey, 
Like Iowa, Iowa would have to have a, a stupendous comeback over the next two, three years for yeah. Fran McCaffrey, I think, to get that cachet back with yeah, the Iowa fans. I agree. With you. I feel like he's the if we're if we're doing our hot seats as we will as we get closer to the season, Fran McCaffrey is going to have to be on the hot seat. <laughs> he's going to be. It's not his fault. It just happens. He's going to be on the hot seat. Put him on the hot seat. Put him on the hot seat. Uh, I just pulled up the box score because I, I remember there was a stupid stat. I from, love Fran McCaffrey, back. by the way. Personally, I would never put him on the hot seat, but the Iowa fans, <laughs> they were upset. I'm just reporting it, folks. I'm just, I'm telling, just telling you what, what I'm, 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 I'm telling you what I'm hearing. Uh, I remember a stupid stat from that game, but I, I went to double check it. Um, Oregon starters in that game had 89 points. Yeah, it was ridiculous. <laughs> Their five starters combined for 89 well, points. And, and the bench, a 40-minute the college bench actually for Iowa, they had some guys that came off the bench that that were better than their starters. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that, the McCaffrey's second, son was good, right? Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. yeah. The, I mean, the I, other I love one, the McCaffrey the kids. Yeah. 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 They're, they're, yeah. <laughs> I love the McCaffrey <laughs> What are you doing? There? I just know that they're gonna pull this clip and be like, Fray McCaffrey's on the hot seat. And I just want to go ahead and say that's not coming from me. That's coming from the Iowa fans. That's what they're gonna say. Jim, we did a super cut of Tate just throughout the years, all the times where he just like shitting all over someone. And he's I love like, that guy. And I, you have to understand them. I love this. So I, it pains me to say this. <laughs> I uh, I saw someone called Dick Vitale uh, the biggest cheerleader of basketball, and I don't know why it made me laugh so much. But there's sometimes on the show where it does feel like you you get in that mode, you know. Yeah. Like I'm a fan, I'm cheering on this team, I'm a cheerleader for these guys. Here's but... a question I have for you, a big picture question that uh, we can pivot away from the the tier for a second because yeah. I, I I genuinely uh, uh, I don't know who cares, but uh, do d- does the name image likeness t- to to this point you're talking about does name image likeness rules change for you the way we both you and I and college basketball media college basketball fans should be quote unquote allowed to talk about players because for the longest time yeah as I've gotten older this has been weird because when I was uh, when I, I I started doing this which I I don't know what this really is but mm-hmm. whatever the hell it is we do it for a living. Right after college tape, yeah. and when I would talk about players, I, I I wouldn't necessarily be ruthless, but like I I was on a college basketball team for four years, and I know that if a guy misses two free throws, up by two with a minute left, like I know that the coach is yelling at him in the locker room and yeah. telling him he's you know I know the language that's being used. Yes. I I understand like the sentiment. Yes. So if for, Coach K was there, he's going to be wearing Timberlands and running the stadium later yes. that night. Yes. And I understand all the, I understood mm-hmm. all that. So like when I got into this business, and I would like talk about players or coaches uh i mean i was ruthless towards tom cream because i was like like yeah. uh, be better tom You're, you suck like what, <laughs> he what, has not forgotten yeah he's never <laughs> he'll never forget that and um as i've gotten older i've realized oh, that it, it it becomes a, a worse look i guess as you get older and you're you're ripping on 19 year old kids yeah. and you're like you got to play harder i mean like Dockage, Dockage. That's why a lot of people like hated Dockage. i i liked it i used to like Dockage, believe it or not uh once upon a time um because I he, liked him until he stood up our live show. Yeah, that, that was the end of it. <laughs> I gave him the benefit of the doubt. But he I used say to. Like he 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 was that way though because he would uh he he would like not necessarily attack kids but like a guy wouldn't run back on defense. He's like that's you're not you, yeah. like you drive. That's just yeah. that's just how he say it. And yeah. People were like what? And um I guess I guess as I've gotten older, what what has happened is I realized yeah maybe we should calm down a little bit because they are amateur athletes. I it, it it probably I shouldn't be like pushing forty and ripping on a kid for not getting who cares you know it's like if kind of like that, that's messed with my brain yeah but then <laughs> someone recently is like brought up the idea that like if these guys are making money does that make them professionals mm. does that make it more not not that we have to like crap all over the guys or whatever but yeah you know you know what i mean no, is that gonna I, change I you're saying I, and i think th- there's an easy solution here we need to know all the nil deal deals like we need them mapped out for us like we need to have a, a sheet jim maybe we work on this where we see you know what this deal is how long the deal is what the company is and then we have a list of guys yeah and they're the ones that are we're allowed to rip on yeah and and i think you're right and and i and i because and we and we and we posit it that way to everybody we say look would never do this to leaky black (laughs) would never do that to him but armando baycott is getting paid by jimmy seafood and if he doesn't get his ass back on defense (laughs) i'm gonna lose my mind (laughs) <laughs> no, I mean, a great example, Amani Bates. That's who we're talking about a lot recently. Amani <laughs> Bates uh, stabs Michigan State in the back, decommits after yeah. talking about loyalty, uh, uses the commitment to Michigan State to help his father's little school that they'd created. That whole, you know, like it's, it's pretty transparent what happened. And my my immediate instinct is like, rip the situation, because this is the 
what's yeah. going on. Like I, we, we see what's going on. Um, but then you're like, you know, maybe, maybe it's just a kid making the best decision for himself. Maybe, you know, like maybe I should pull back a little bit. I don't care how, what your perspective is on this, like to, to, to that extent, if, if you're someone who really believes like, just let the kid make whatever his decision is, we shouldn't have any say in any of these guys' decisions whatsoever. The moment I tell you that like Amani Bates backed away from Michigan state and is mm. like going to Memphis cause he's going to make $5 million, whatever the number is. Yeah. I don't care how much you were thinking that some small party is like, oh, okay, well then I get it. You know, like some small party is <laughs> like, all right, I guess you can create, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not that you have to, not that you have to say he's a bad person or attack his face. I don't mean all that. I'm just saying like, in the same way that if, if we were to, to rag on professional basketball players, I don't think anyone really like rushes their defense and says like, calm down. These guys. Well, absolutely you know, you know I mean? not. Yeah, absolutely. I, find, not. I think that's going to be Quite fascinating. I think that's going to be fascinating moving forward. Cause a big thing about like criticizing basketball players, was college basketball players was they're not even getting paid, dude. Like what the hell's wrong with you? Yeah. What, what what is wrong with you? Yeah. Well, because usually the, the person head? that is talking about them is getting paid, so it's this yes. weird. It's a weird dynamic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And maybe now, I think you're right. I think we need to know. We need the, the list. Deals. Yeah, give me the list. Release the deals. I, yeah. I want to know who I can show. I'm like looking at Paige <laughs> Becker's, like how much money she's making. I'm like, I I don't see anything to rip on, but I think I have to. <laughs> it's an obligation to rip on her. <laughs> Send me the list of people making more money than me, and I'm going after all of them. <laughs> That's not how this sport works. I make the money. Yeah. <laughs> the I, think, I think that's the Dan Dockage approach. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. What else we got? Any Anything else on the list, Tate, that we got to hit? I losers, mean, losers as we're going through some of the things that happened in the offseason, you know, I run through some stuff. I mean, Mac McClung making his decision to go to the NBA. I, I just feel like that's still in the college Sign basketball. A contract. Yeah, I know. But I feel like that was still in the college basketball sphere, you know, because Chris Beard, will he go there to Texas? Will he stay at Texas Tech? Mac McClung won the offseason because he ended up going to the Lakers. You know what I mean? That's where he, he got the transfer Lakers. portal and he went to the Lakers. <laughs> I mean, that's a W. We got to put him up there. So I was happy about that. Uh, we should get at college basketball. We should be able to uh, uh, draft our own guys. Like when they go to the, we, we, we should get like a, uh, like Mac McClung's a college basketball player. I, like yes. If Mac McClung becomes a five-time NBA all-star, He's still a college basketball player. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Well, it's like what Josh I'm Hart. Like I watched Josh, Josh Hart. Josh Hart's a college, like, he's basketball. college basketball player. Yeah. 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 He's ours. Yeah. yeah. He's we get him. Kimball Walker. He's ours. Kimball Walker. Yeah. He is. Great call. He is. Great call. They tr- they tried they tried to make him an NBA star. Who's the but he's best? A college basketball who's player. the best college basketball player in NBA history? Mm. Tim Duncan. Yeah. Tim Duncan. Maybe Tim Duncan. Yeah. James Worthy. Tim Duncan. Yeah. Final, like, finals MVP. I'm looking at just finals MVPs. Okay. Right? That's what I'm thinking of right now. So yeah. James Worthy, Tim Duncan, Steph Curry, if he won a finals MVP, would be in there. Mm. Didn't win one. Mm-hmm. Can't be in the conversation. Kevin Durant yeah. is a college basketball uh, player. I think he is. I think he is. To me, he's a college basketball player. Yeah. He's kind of 50 50. So. He's split. He's on both sides. Uh, Tim Duncan's the right answer. Tim Duncan's the answer. He's yeah. the, he's the yeah. four years of Wake Forest, national player of the year. See, I don't, I don't know if one and done guys can be college basketball players. I know that 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 is that's the, where my Greg Oden but, is a college basketball but Ky- player. Greg was, yeah. yeah. Mike Greg, Conley's a college basketball player. See, I would say, I would say Mike might be split too. He, he may Mike have is a up. little split. Yeah, yeah. I, I I would say that Anthony Davis was college, but he's become. I think if Anthony Davis doesn't go to the Lakers, maybe we make the argument he's the one one and done guy yeah. that belongs to college. Yeah, but now he's he's. Especially like when you look at that team now, yeah. you're just like, my God, That's Anthony NBA. Davis yeah. literally dragged them to the championship. <laughs> what a stupid exercise that we're doing here, but it makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Matt McClung's a college I mean, Gordon player. Hayward is up there as one of the best college basketball NBA Great point. players. Seriously. Great point. He's up there. <laughs> right. And I'm not saying that just because I'm a Charlotte Hornet, all right? But he's definitely <laughs> Who's the best there. NBA player that came through college for more than one year? Ooh. <laughs> That's a good question. It really is. And everyone it's knows Jordan, what I'm talking right? about. Yeah, it's it'd be, probably it'd be Jordan. Jordan. It'd yeah. have to be Jordan. Three years. Yeah, because he was there three years. Yeah, never mind. Kareem. Yeah. Uh, all right, this is stupid. Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> what, what What else? I, I, I could I, argue Kareem's a college basketball player. Kareem might be. Yeah. Walton is, for Walton sure. Walton is. Uh, Kareem, well, is, is maybe, you know, the name change helps us out with that. Lou Alcindor is a high school college player. Isaiah Thomas is up there for, like, NBA player. That was amazing in college. Great won call. a title. It's great probably call. Jordan versus Isaiah Thomas. That's a great call. Which is uh, hilarious because that is literally, I feel like basketball, basketball could be described as either Jordan, like for certain generations, like Jordan versus LeBron. But if you lived in the 20th century and have any sort of, you know, mind, it was kind of like bird and magic, Isaiah Jordan, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and you, you had to pick a side. Yeah. 
and it kind of defined who you are with like i like magic and michael you know what i mean and you like larry bird and isaiah yeah, <laughs> yeah i like the indiana guys <laughs> no i mean out. but i'm just saying like you know you you, you pick your sides and that's yeah. where you stand yeah bird where, where what was bird 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 went to the title game he can't be college but he though. but he went to the title game he can't be college. magic can't be college either yeah magic's not college <laughs> uh, i wanted to shout out as a winner um in this offseason the entire big 10 i was waiting mm. for you to say it i can't believe that wasn't number one on your list uh he did not make my list <laughs> Jawan howard first of all always winning stays winning um has number one recruiting class in the country tate yep. everyone's talking about chet holmgren and gonzaga what about the class you're looking at one player tate how about you look at the whole class yep michigan has the best class hunter dickinson is back um, and Dwan Howard, Michigan's going to be very good. Uh, Purdue's going to be very good. Uh, mm. The Big Ten as a whole is going to be very good. Brad Underwood, as we know, was was a big fat loser in April. Yeah, he, everyone was leaving. All his coaches left. Io DeSuma left. Yeah, Kofi Coburn was in the transfer portal. Adam Miller left. Yeah, uh, it, it looked like the sky was falling in Champaign. He has circled the wagons. Illinois is very much back. They're going to be fine. Yeah, Kofi Coburn uh, is probably the Big Ten Player of the Year preseason, right? So. That's good. Mike Woodson has knocked it out of the park from the second he was hired at Indiana. Yes. And uh, I think the Indiana fans, it's been interesting. They, they just went to the Bahamas and smoked the Serbian professional team twice on their little international trip they did. Yeah. Uh, and it's, I, I will say this about Indiana fans that I, from what I can gather, they, they have now shifted into the cautious optimism, fit, which yeah. is, it, this does feel different. I don't know if Mike Woodson's going to be different. I know everyone that's not an Indiana, Indiana fan is like, we've been here before. This is Tennessee football. This is Texas football, whatever football, mm -hmm. Nebraska football. Mm -hmm. People love comparing Indiana to, to whatever to football, football school. Michigan yeah. football. Yeah, this is USC football. <laughs> <laughs> um, and maybe it is, but I will say the the vibe is very different, Tate. That's all I'm going to say is that the vibe around Indiana is different because – I would agree with that. I gauge it based off of the fans. The fans, every time when they hire – Tom Crean, the fans grabbed their nuts, threw up middle fingers, and said, Suck it, America. We're back, baby. Yeah. And then that didn't work out. And then they hired Archie Miller and they grabbed their nuts and they said, Suck it, America. We're back, baby. Now <laughs> that didn't work out. Now they're hiring Mike Woodson and he has killed every like every step of the way. He's been he's he the recruiting, the the things he's saying to the media. Um, on down the line, he's killing it. And you, you ask Indiana fans, like, you're feeling pretty good about this season? They're like, Whew. Yes. I see, I, I would see. I would say like yeah. if we're doing tiers, like tier two for me, Indiana, Mike Woodson got to be in there because Trace Jackson Davis, as he said yeah. himself, he was going to the NBA. Yeah. But Mike Woodson comes back and says, Hey, young man, I watch your tape. You ain't playing in the NBA. Yeah. And I, but if you stay here with one more year, I'll teach you how to play in the NBA. And it's it's really good that the you know, whatever the the news media of college basketball, the elite media of college basketball that, you know, love smelling their own farts. They decided mm -hmm. that Mike Woodson was a terrible hire. Mm -hmm. I think that was the best thing that happened in Indiana because when Archie got hired, it was Miller time. He's going to be perfect. He's going to be great. Take yada, the spotlight yada, yada. off. Yeah. So yeah, you know what? He was a bad hire. We'll just go, we'll just go deal with our bad exactly. hire. Don't, yeah. don't worry about. And I think that's him. working for Mike yeah. Woodson. And, and I think it, he would rather prefer that because we remember he went to the Knicks playoff game. Yeah. And Mike, Dude, I mean, he, so he, Indiana is up there. They, they almost won the off season. They're definitely tier two. I think part of the, the vibe around Indiana fans is also that the football team is ranked for the first time in yeah. a thousand years. I want to say it is. Um, yeah which is your football school just like yeah, north carolina yeah well, welcome to the party so there's the that element of uh usually this is the time of year where indiana fans are looking forward to basketball season all the way this this far in advance because yeah. it's like Same. our football team sucks yeah now they're like you know what i'm not even, i'm gonna instead of trying to stick my chest out about what mike woodson's doing let's focus on the football team and we'll check in in november on the basketball team which is going to work out wonders for for indiana i, think, I was going to say this, this is usually a recipe for disaster yeah. you know what i mean like especially as a north carolina football fan every single time i've had this feeling where i'm like give me give me to the first game it's it's yeah. terrible yeah. and the first game happens to be in blacksburg you know what i mean so they're gonna be doing the hokey pokey they're carolina gonna be, does carolina play, play does football? yeah they're, yeah exactly they're yeah. gonna be jingling their keys saying key play Lane Stadium is no joke, and uh, they'll probably lose that game, and then we'll be back to a basketball school. But going into the season, Indiana, North Carolina, mm -hmm. football schools. Uh, Maryland, we got to put on the list with, with Big Ten schools. They were killing it. Uh, Juwan, uh, Juwan Howard. Mark Turgeon <laughs> I was, I had the fight with Juwan Howard. Yeah, is exactly. What I was saying. Yeah, yeah. And he answers Juwan Howard's number one recruiting class by getting uh, two big time transfers. He gets Danny Manning on staff. That was Mark. Mark Turgeon was a big winner in uh, like April, May. If yeah. I remember, he right. was too early. He, he kind of he kind of peaked too early with yeah. his uh, off season winning. 
Um, what else is there? The 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 Bucks won the title. That counts as a Big Ten title. <laughs> uh, Marcus Carr's out of the league. We love that. Yeah. Uh, the SEC has has formed their super conference, and now the Big Ten is like basically in a position where we're the only life raft in town. And if you want to get it, either jump on our life raft or go sink with the ACC if you want. No, just stay <laughs> just stay put, ACC. <laughs> Don't take any phone calls. Stop calling oh, people. Oh man, I saw Mac Brown. Uh, he you know shout out to Mac Brown. He he said that he fears that these mega con- he calls them mega conferences. So I'm gonna stick with that term now. I like that better than super conferences. Mm-hmm. He said the mega conferences are great but they're also going to leave some schools behind and he's very worried about those schools and it it is going to be a disaster. You know what I mean? Like this whole new world that we're about to live in, but it's going to be great for content and that's why we're here. So I'm excited. It's for It's going to be great for content for sure. <laughs> uh, what else? Shout out to tip and edits guy. He was a big winner of this offseason. All the transfers, yeah. all the guys that were tons of transfers, committing, transferring, untransferring. Coffee. Honestly, Jay Billis's Titanic tweet has got to be up there <laughs> uh, as far as winning the offseason. That's one of the ones I remember. That's really stuck out to me. Kofi Coburn <laughs> declared for the draft. Yes. Undeclared. Yes. Put his name in the transfer portal. And then stayed at home. And then stayed at home. <laughs> Never forget that. Never forget. We can, You and I cannot forget this. That's one of the more... Propo- Daryl Morcel... <laughs> <laughs> when he announced he was leaving Maryland. That was my favorite. I think Morcel actually probably is a tier one winner of the offseason. Daryl Morcel just straight he, – where is he at? Marquette now? He yeah. ended up transferring. So, yeah. like, at least he – Shaka. But if he would have stayed, that would have been the funniest thing, I think, in college basketball history, that this man announced the possibilities are endless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to spin a wheel. I'm going to spin a wheel of fortune, see where it ends. I might go to the draft, might not, might transfer, might not, might stay, might not. Might go play overseas. Might go play might overseas. Not. Might not. Those are his four <laughs> options. That's pretty awesome. Oh, so good. What else is there? We have shout outs. I, yeah, let's up. start shouting out. Uh, I wanted to shout out Urban Meyer. Um, it takes a lot to cut someone that you love. And uh, I watched those highlights of Tim Tebow. I did not watch the game because, I mean, you know, I'm not watching the Jaguars play preseason football. But I watched the highlights of Tim Tebow, and they were hilarious. You know what I mean? Him trying to block. Uh, I saw Shannon Sharp go on TV. He's like, I'm a tight end. He's like, this is no effort. This is zero effort. You know, you you throw this guy out of camp. And if you don't, you lose all respect to the locker room. So I thought it was great that Urban Meyer – Obviously had someone on staff tell him that, that if he did yeah. not cut Tim Tebow, he was going to lose the locker room. And that is like Urban Meyer's dedication to Tim Tebow is like he was willing to lose the entire Jacksonville Jaguars locker room over Tim Tebow. But then he finally was like, OK, but do you, you think go. he was the one that made the decision? No, I think he was convinced to. I really do. I, and I, I just wanted to shout him out because I'm sure that was a tough conversation for whoever came, you know, shot Khan or whoever it was. The owner yeah. like came down and said, hey. You got to do this. And I'm sure he was like, there's zero chance I'm cutting this I'm, guy. I'm excited for Urban to be the coach in Jacksonville. Um, I think he's got I, one or two years at this point. I just want him to like do something. Uh, I, I, I'm i excited to not have to pretend like the guy cares about Ohio State or have, I, I'm excited to, to just sever the connection, you mm. know? And like when he, when he worked here at Fox and uh, he, he left Ohio State, he's working at Fox. Uh, you go back to Columbus all the time and call the games, and there's always like the little connection of like Urban's never going to coach again, and he's he's you know yeah. like he he was kind of like just kind of around, and th- that I don't want that tape. I'm a Trestle guy, always have been. Mm. I like and, Trestle and, too. Yeah, Urban was Urban. I don't know. He just used people forget to... both of our football programs. Same summer, 2010. The NCAA came to town. That's they right. came to Ohio State for tattoos. They came to North Carolina for classes, and because Robert Quinn had an expensive watch on. And this That's is the right. this is the organization that we have to get rid of. You know what I mean? And we have all these fun conversations, but the NCAA has always been the problem. They've actually stopped good things from happening in the sport. It, in the in the um, you know, in the good faith of amateurism, which we now know was corrupt. Yeah. So like we have to all come together and say, F these guys. That's yeah. why they couldn't do anything with LSU. Because if they tried to, LSU would have been like, Okay, well, we've been talking to the SEC and they're the NCAA now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want That's urban to uh urban's just the type of dude that says this is my dream job every time he gets a job gets a job yeah and when he came to fox he was like this is this my is dream, dream job. job i'm never yeah. gonna leave i'm never gonna leave yeah. everyone upstairs is like man this is awesome urban's gonna be here forever gets one call from the jaguar he's like this is my this is dream, my dream job. job i've always wanted to go to jacksonville 
<laughs> and I just want I I just want the urban uh especially I want Ryan Day to, to continue to be awesome and just I I don't know. Ur- I, urban was just Urban was a blip, not a not a bomb. Yeah, he was day. a you know blip. I, mean? I want him to be a blip. He, you just guys like needed a, guy a national coach. title, like you said, to get that stench off he was of a you mercenary. from the BCS. Yeah, like yeah. we both used each other. Send him on his way. Like, yeah. come on, we don't need the to... my so, one Urban Meyer story. I was at LAX. This is probably like four. This is when he was still at Ohio State four or five years yeah. ago. Uh, he had uh, two security guys with him. He had his little rolling suitcase. He rolls by. I'm sitting at a bar. He rolls by my bar, talking on the phone, obviously wanting to be seen, mm-hmm. walking very slowly with his security. And then not five minutes later, he comes rolling back. And I was like, is this man just doing strolls? <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he was. Yeah. He just wanted to get, you know, seen by people. Seen to be seen. That's our yeah. Uh I want to shout out the Little League World Series, which is going on right yes. now. As we're recording this, we actually have it on in the, uh, I can't read the score though. Bases are juice for somebody. Um, and also driving in a lot today, I called my dad on the way in mm. and he was watching. This, this is day one of the Olympic World Series. And my dad uh, watches the regional state. My dad is locked in. He, he knows <laughs> he can handicap the Olympic World Series probably. Mm. Um, and he, he told me two things. Number one, he said, look out for Tennessee. That was his big pick. Now, out of the gate, not looking great. Tennessee lost today. They lost to Ohio, one nothing in extras. Oh wow! But the reason my dad loved Tennessee is because they apparently have a kid who was just mowing people down for Ohio and is like unhittable. And Danny Almonte. Yeah, they got a Danny Almonte type. So uh, Tennessee took the L today, but they they might not be out of it. Ohio though, like if my dad's saying Tennessee is the best, yeah. and Ohio out of the gate is is beating Tennessee. All right, all right. Um, I just can't. I just can't get Danny. Al- Remember how big he was? You know what I mean? Like when Danny Almonte like went to like he's like sixty feet away from these like eleven year olds. You're like this kid's he's seventeen. Throwing, he's throwing ninety four. He's like now. throwing straight Dontrell Willis gas. Uh, there's also apparently my dad told me there's a kid from Hawaii that pitches with both hands. Oh, that's sick. And my 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 dad is done that. with Belmont. Not really. So Belmont, if you're listening, he didn't say, he didn't say this. But yeah. th- th- this is my read on it. My dad has put to put aside his his Belmont pet peeve that Belmont was snubbed from the NCAA tournament, and his new pet peeve is why can the kid from Hawaii that pitches with both hands not get a 85 limit pitch count? Because that's the limit. You can only throw 85 pitches in little league, and then yeah. you got to take yeah, it out. Yeah, of course. Why can't he pitch 85 pitches with his left hand? And then switch to his right and pitch eighty five with his right. Because that would that would be sick. Because he's like, if the rules in place for these kids' arms not to, be to fall safe. off, to yeah. be safe, that's safe. Let him do it. That's my. Dad. But we all know. But we all dad. know that's it's not why the rules are in place. Right. That's the problem. Right. But that's the that's the cause <laughs> my dad's fighting for right now. So uh, keep an eye on that. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I remember I was uh, when I was covering Carolina baseball. Uh, Ken Emanuel, we're in the ACC tournament. He had thrown 121 pitches in one game. This is a <laughs> this is a 14 inning. We're playing. Is Dusty in- Baker, the manager. <laughs> well, dude, Trey Turner, who now plays on the Dodgers, the shortstop for NC State. Uh, Carlos Rodon uh, for the White Sox is pitching for NC State. You know, we have Colin Moran, who's on the Astros, like playing third base for North. I mean, it's like a lot of MLB players are in this yeah. game. Ken Emanuel is throwing like 120 some pitches at this point. And everyone's looking at the bench. They're like, well, Mike Fox definitely has to make the move now. And he rolls it back. <laughs> I was like, yeah, they don't care about these kids arms. The best part about the League World Series is that there's always every team has, especially at the, this level, of the yeah. World Series, not every Little League team. But if you're going to make the Williamsport, you have to have at least one kid that's hit puberty in, in a big way. Yeah. Like there, there has to be one kid that's like at least it's five, your cleanup 10, five 11. Yeah. yeah. The guy who the guy who's getting jammed. It's like hit, the ball's hitting his hands as he swings, and it still goes over the field. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like goes over in right field. <laughs> so every team has that guy, which is uh, as as you said, like that's why they have the eighty five pitch limit. Is because yeah. if that guy's pitching, we got to get him out of here. Yeah. We can't just let him dominate every game. But then they also take, and this is the fun wrinkle about little league. It feels like every single one of these teams has the run. Mm-hmm. Every single team seems to have like the coach's kid or like the, yeah. the kid who's like the best kid's brother usually the second baseman yes yeah and the kid that sucks and the literally world series rules say that all the kids have to take an at-bat and play mm-hmm. yeah in the field so which the was coaches, the rule for the coach's son so you, that he could play you can make an argument that literally world series coaches are the best coaches in all of sports yeah. that they have to manage a team with that in place where they're like how do we maximize the Our puberty talent. yeah <laughs> and minimize <laughs> this pip squeaks yeah impact on yeah. the game it's amazing it is the sport of August. You know what I mean? Like we were yeah. talking about the calendar. It's like we get done with the Olympics. If you're a sports fan, now you go straight to Little League World Series. And that I think that when people ask the difference between Los Angeles and North Carolina and like watching and viewer experience and fandom, that's the difference. Because in North Carolina and in Ohio and Indiana, 
they just keep rolling with what's on TV. They just keep yeah. watching the next sport up like your dad. My dad's doing the same thing. And that, I miss that. I, I feel like I get distracted out here. I need to get back to the Little League World Series. I'm going to start watching. I know. I know. I mean, well, I used to watch NASCAR the... races sometimes on Sundays. You know how boring that is? <laughs> you know how stupid that is? <laughs> but I did it. Oh, man. Anything else? Any shout outs? I mean, honestly, I don't really have any major shout outs. I, I just wanted to work through the off season because I feel like we're yeah. getting closer and closer. I do have one thing I want to shout out. There was a there's a picture going around of my university. The first day of class, everyone goes to the old well and they take a sip of water out of the old well. What? Yeah, that's what that's just like that's good luck. That's what you're supposed to do. So before your first day of class, you go to the old well, you take a sip of water. There's a picture that's circulating around that you UNC had put out themselves of the long line and all these kids going up to the, to the public water fountain, taking a sip, then walking to class. Next kid comes up and obviously it's a pandemic. This is probably the worst thing that you could do as far as germs. You know what I mean? This is like people putting their spittle on a public thing. And then the next kid comes up and do it, you know? So I just want to say, I thought we were smarter as a university. Um, <laughs> I'm a fan of your university. I'm, under no, the I'm bus? a fan of tradition. I'm just, and I love the tradition. I did it my freshman year for my mom. My mom's like, please go to the old well, get a sip of water. It'll be good luck. I did that. I did not get an A in that class that I went to astronomy. Barely, barely got through it, honestly. So the, the water did not help me, but in a global pandemic, maybe we skipped the tradition for one year. That's all I'm saying. Come on, guys. You, how, I, how did I never know this about that? People Carolina? do this. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're superstitious. <laughs> not going wood three times. Get your sip of water. Make sure you get to class five minutes early. You know, there's all types of things you got to do. <laughs> but don't do it during a global pandemic. And surely don't tweet the picture out. You know what I mean? I don't even, I don't even yeah. care that you do it. Just don't put the picture out and have all these people tweeting at me. Uh, any thoughts? Uh, what, what do you think about this? Uh, uh. <laughs> nothing. I think nothing of it. Just don't do it. You just brought it up. I know. Well, I'm yelling <laughs> at these people. I'm yelling at these people. Stop tweeting at me the same image. Streisand effect at work here. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Ryan Vasily right now. Uh, my final shout out is uh, to my brother, uh, who I gave a shout out to uh, his birthday. He, he, he turned, how old did he turn? He, he was born in 84. Was it 37, I guess? Nice. At the start of the month. Uh, some sad news in the family, Tate. Uh, Ryan had to put down his dog. Oh, my his God. Dog. And the reason, I'm not telling you that to, to as a bummer. Um, I, I, it, it, the, it, it was noteworthy because this is the first dog our family ever had. Uh, we It wasn't the family dog. It was Ryan, like Ryan got him when he had graduated college and he was living on his own or whatever. But we never had dogs growing up. My dad said he was allergic. We've Now that all the kids have dogs, <laughs> we realize he just didn't want a dog. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm allergic. He's, like, he's allergic to the dogs and we come over with <laughs> like, dogs. What kind of dog are you allergic to? He's like, oh. Dude, my dad comes over and like grabs <laughs> Moses and like rubs his face and he's just putting his face in Moses' face and I'm like, are you not allergic anymore? what the hell happened here he's like mark um so my brother got his dog uh before i got moses that was so i was the first one in any of our family to have a dog and it kind of like ignited our love for dogs and yeah. then we, we became a dog was we a golden dog retriever people. also it was also a golden retriever wow. but the real reason i'm sharing the story because i could tell you this off air and then like maybe our audience doesn't care to to be the shout outs close out yeah. they're, they're, they're done they're you done. know the real reason i'm telling you the story is because <laughs> My brother's a Cubs fan, just like me, just like yeah. my entire family. And so what do you do when you're a Cubs fan and you get your first dog? You name it Wrigley. Oh, good name. The dog was named Wrigley, Tate. And uh, a month ago, three weeks ago, four, however long ago, Wrigley had a clean bill of health. He was fine. He was a, a dog that you would have looked at him. You would have said, that dog is is a model dog. Mm -hmm. he, is, he is perfect. Then the Ricketts family traded the Cubs court. They traded everybody. <laughs> they traded everybody. I get what you're saying now. It broke Wrigley's heart. And I, I, I'm not saying that Tom Ricketts killed my brother's dog. I'm just saying that if you, if, if you someone put, made if, that argument, I would listen. Yeah. If the Hardy boys put the clues together, yeah. all signs point to, I mean, seeing Anthony Rizzo in a Yankees jersey probably yes. was the last straw yes. for Wrigley. Yeah. He so was like, dad, he, turn off sports center. He was, uh, he was 11. He was, he was, you know, he was, he was an older dog. So like it was, it was whatever. But, uh, I, I, I just want to shout out. Brian listens to the show too. I already talked to him. We like, you know, we love we you, Ryan. Him. We love, Sorry. we love, love the, Wrigley too. We love the pup, um, all that. But the, the coincidence of the timing of it all, like my, cause my brother called me when, uh, when the trade happened and then like he found out Wrigley was sick, uh, like three days later. 
and just Sounds... you know, th- so the other day when he called me and he said like we finally we put we put him down or he he did bring he mentioned that up he's like and I don't want to point out the obvious but like what the hell am I talking to Wrigley like as the Cubs what what do you think the over under <laughs> is on the next World Series for the Cubs this is what I asked one of my friends when all this was happening I gave the line at thirty and a half years yeah I think you're right I don't think it's gonna happen uh, I, I I don't know if that's just the defeatist in me that's just like. You know, I'm just the worst so thing that happened was you guys winning. Yeah. You know what I mean? For the future. Like it was great when it happened, obviously, but it was all there was like this dark kind of undertone to the win where it was like, Oh, we did it. Oh, oh it's no. over. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know uh, yeah identity like, crisis. Yeah. It's like if Purdue ever makes a final four again. Yeah. They don't know what they're going to do with yeah, themselves. Yeah. Who are we? Because <laughs> now we're just the team that went to one no, final for, four. Purdue hangs a national championship banner. Mm. Like Purdue loves it, obviously, but then they have to step back and be like, Crap, now we're in the game. Because, like, right now, yeah. Indiana's the banner game. Purdue is like the, we don't do the banners. We send guys to the moon, bitch. Like, that's yeah. better. Yeah. But once you win one banner, now, now you're in the game. And now Indiana has five and you have one. Now you're four behind. So the question is, should Purdue actually not try to win the national championship? I, I say yes. I say yes. I say yes, too. I say yes. <laughs> I say yes, too. Purdue went to a Final Four, by the way. I'm just kidding. I, I've said that before on shows and people get mad at me. I'm like, they've been there. I thought for the longest time they didn't. They, 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 no, we looked that up. The reason I know that is because we looked it up one time like years ago because we were, ar- I think I was arguing that they had never been to one. You're yeah. like, I think they've been to 1980, one. 1980, Kevin Stallings yeah, is on exactly. the team. Shout out Kevin Stallings. <laughs> I swear to God, look that I know, up. I know, I <laughs> know. Maybe, they that's why, to, maybe that's why we looked it up. Dude, they lost to UCLA. Imagine that. Mm. I'm at, let me paint a picture for you. Larry Brown is at UCLA. My dad's told me about this, so like you can't really, you can't really talk shit if you're an Indiana fan. It all comes full circle, by the way. It goes back to Larry Brown. Yeah. You can't really talk shit if you're an NFL fan because because Purdue beat IU in that NCAA tournament. I think I think IU beat Purdue in the NIT title game the next year when the this was when the NIT mattered. I think this is the last year the NIT mattered to my dad. Um, but uh, Purdue well, they won the championship in '81. No, th- th- when did they when did they win the NIT? Uh, hold on, damn it, yeah, they won the championship in '81. The, they beat North Carolina. They shouldn't Indiana have played Purdue the game because Ronald Reagan got shot the same day, and all the yeah, North Carolina right. players were like, "We don't want to play the game." It was '79. It was the year before, is what I meant. Oh, the yeah. year before, yeah, 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 Indiana yeah. beat Purdue in gotcha. the NIT title game. Then they're in the tournament. Purdue beats Indiana. Anyway, Final Four in Indianapolis State. You're playing against UCLA. You're Purdue. You're playing just down the road, mm-hmm. and they blew it. There was, it was they they could have played Louisville. It could have been Purdue Louisville national championship in 1980 in Indianapolis. Imagine that scene. Yeah. But what was it instead? It was better for the Blue Bloods because it was yeah. Denny Crum who would come from UCLA to Louisville versus Larry Brown in UCLA. Yeah. The guy that should have taken over UCLA I versus the legend Looking himself. back, I should have known how much my dad hated because my dad, my dad talks about 1980 like Purdue failed because they lost in the Final Four in Indianapolis. Yeah. And then I'm like, dude, they beat Indiana. I know, I know yeah. That. That, well, that's <laughs> yeah, why. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, how could you talk trash? But he was so good at it. He's such a good Purdue hater that he's of like, course. I don't care that they beat my team. Yeah. I'm going to continue. It's like me with Duke. I mean, Duke never did anything without Coach K. And then people will pull it. They'll bring it up. They'll be like, Vic Bubis went to the three, three straight Final Fours. I'm like, no, he didn't. Shut up. All right. Let's uh, let's wrap this up. Let's get the hell out of here. Uh, thanks for listening. We'll see you guys next week. See you then.